fingers. He's the man, the man with the golden glove. A gold touch. Such a cold finger. Fingers, girls, the girls with his golden touch. But don't go near. He will turn you to gold, it is clear. And that it is gonna kill you. So don't go near that horrible man. Phone, enable translation mode. Done. Okay, so, um, do you have what I want? I have what you want. Do you have what I want? Well, the bag of money here, you give me the technology that I want. Do you know how to use this technology? Yeah, I think I do. It's nanobots. Nanotechnology, yeah? And it's gonna do what I need it to do. You did read my specifications, didn't you? We did read the specifications and they have been programmed accordingly. Good, good. They better do what they want what I want them to do. They will do what you have told us to make them do. Good. Good. So what did you want the vibration effects to do? What what do you mean? We were curious on what you wanted to actually make with this. Well, you see. This glove here is made out of gold, gold thread, woven specifically for a job. This is the newest sexual toy that I've come up with. And by having those nanobots put into the uh, gold on this glove, it will give them the most pleasurable experience ever known to mankind you see when they're here when they're put into this glove all the atoms of gold will vibrate and they will get the most amount of pleasure ever ever it is a very abstract concept for us to understand why you need pleasure to reproduce. We reproduce by egg fertilization and that is it. Yes, well, there's more about that. It's basically the biological incentive, yeah. And when you don't have someone to be with, you want that same pleasure. And this is what this glove is all about. My golden glove. And I cannot wait to use this technology it's a great effect. Okay, well, if anything goes wrong, you did not get the technology from us. Why are you saying that? Have you fucked me over or something? We have not fucked you over, but we don't believe that the technology was designed to do that. You're the one who has used our technology and had us program it. We advise you test this before it goes to market. Yeah, of course I'm going to fucking test it, mate. You know, I went to great expense and I want, it to, want to know if it's going to bloody work, okay? Well, let us know how it gets on. Yeah, I will do. I will do. Hey there, I'm looking for Richard. Yeah, that'd be me. My uh, guy told me to come over here. 
Good, good. You're a bit early, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to, like, let you through, okay? Now, when the door opens up, I want you to go to the far end of the uh, corridor. It's the door furthest down. That's where I'm sat in my lab, okay? Okay, then. Good. I'll see you in a moment. Hi there, my name's Tiffany. Yeah, I'm sure it is, but anyways, sit down, sweetheart. Sit down, spread your legs, pull your knickers off, and we're going to get straight into this. Wow, you're such a romantic. Look, did your art boss tell you what you're here for? He said that you wanted to test a new uh, sex toy on me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah? So... You're here for a job, and I want to find out exactly if this is going to be the best thing on the market. When, yeah, you know, you'll be the first person to ever experience the biggest amount of pleasure ever. Okay then, so sit here, yeah, sit here, knickers down, spread your fucking legs, and do you want lube or not? Yeah, I'll, I'll have a bit of lube. So what, what are you putting inside me? Right, you see this glove? Yeah, it's made out of gold. And the uh, gold atoms will vibrate. As well as the action that I'm going to give you. So, I want you to tell me how it feels, okay? Yeah, okay then. Right. Leave up and away we go. Mm. Yeah, oh my god! Yeah, how's it feel? It feels tingly, the most tingly thing I've ever. Oh my god, no, it hurts. Uh, it hurts. What? the fuck is going on here? Shit. It's turned to fucking solid gold. What the hell is going on? Seriously? What the fuck is going on? Shit. It's turned into a fucking statue. What the fuck? What the fuck? Right. Phone, pair up with uh, medical scanner immediately. Done. Right, let's have a look then. What the fuck? Shit. It's like there's no distinction between any internal organ. I can't even see any internal organ. She's like proper fucking solid gold in there. There's no organs, it's all... A giant mass of fucking gold. Computer, confirm the chemical makeup of uh, this uh, object. Working. Gold, AU, atomic number 79, atomic mass 196.966565. Melting point 1000. 64 degrees Celsius. Electron configuration. Open bracket X E. Close bracket. 4 F 14. 5 D to the power of 10. 6 S 1. Chemical series. Metal. Transition metal. Toxic heavy metal group. 11 elements. Period. 6 elements. Purity. 22 carats. What? 22 carats. Wow. And there's no biological substance in there. There is no biological substance inside. So she's solid gold with a high gold purity. Right. I've got me an idea. 
Hi there, welcome to Percival Vert's office. My name's Horny, and how can I be of help for you today? I, uh, I have a mission. I've been sent here on a mission from my employer, and I've really, really got to speak to uh, the boss over this. Okay, do you want to tell me so I can then message him? Because he's not in the building just yet. No, no, I, I really got to speak to him directly. I can't talk to anyone else about this. Okay, well, um, who would Percival be working for? Uh, my boss. Little Chiglet. Little Chiglet, eh? Yeah. Little Chiglet. You know who Little Chiglet is, don't you? Yeah, I know who Little Chiglet is. And my boss probably does as well. He's a pimp, isn't he? Yeah, well... There's... There's a real important job that has to happen and Little Jiglet wants the best person you can find on here for a reasonable price that is. Yeah well, we know it's always about the reasonable price. That's why everyone comes to Percival. Yes, indeed. Um, are you going to let him know? Yeah well, just take a seat and I'm sure that I can get Percival here shortly okay okay no worries I'll wait here good good bear with me one moment hi there horny what's up we've got someone here who's representing Lil Chiglet Chiglet. Oh fucking hell. What's that fucking pimp want now? She um she won't say, but she says that it's a very important job and it's very important that you go and speak to little Chiglet as po as soon as possible. Right, well, I'm a little bit tied up here, I'm just waiting for um little bass to get here and untie me. What what do you mean, tied up? Yeah, someone got the drop on me and um, kind of like tied me to a lamppost. To a lamppost, sweetheart? Yeah, to a fucking lamppost. It's a bit embarrassing to be honest. I can't reach my hand to the um, transport or wristband. Ah, uh, I see. I see. Do you want me to transport you here now? No. And uh, why is that? Because little bastard said that if you did, you'd end up uh, transporting the lamppost into the house as well. And I really don't want this lamppost in my fucking house. Let alone the office. <laughs> okay, sweetheart. Well, as soon as um, little bastard gets you free, just come back to the office right away, yeah? Okay then. Um, is uh, this girl wailing then? Yes, this hooker's waiting for you. Right, well, can you get on the phone to little bastard and get him here to hurry up? Yeah, yeah, okay then. Love you, babes. Yeah, I love you too. Bye. Yeah, bye. Hi there, Ma. What can I do for you? Aren't you supposed to be somewhere? Um, I'm not sure. What, what do you mean? Aren't you supposed to be freeing your dad from this lamppost? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's a bit of a funny story, actually. Yeah, well, your dad is needed for a job and a very important one. Yeah. Who's the client? Little Chiglet. Little Chiglet, hey? Well then. Wow. So don't worry about that. I'll get that. I'll get power right now. Yeah. 
What have you been doing? Oh, I've just been letting him hang out there. You've been leaving him hung out to dry? Oh, no, no, not really. I just, um, I was a little bit preoccupied. Yes, let me guess, with some girl. Mother? Really? I'd screw the old man over just because some girl's got her lips clamped around my dick. Yeah, of course you would. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'll go free up power and I'll see you in the office. Yeah, you do that. Right, that's it, lady. Out of the room. Oh, but little bastards. I want a bit more. Yeah, well, you can have some more later on. Right. Let's go and rescue the old man. Right, honey. Send in the uh, hooker, okay? Yeah, I, I, I don't like you saying stuff like that. Well, what do you mean? She's a hooker. She's sat in the waiting room. So, what's her name? I didn't ask. Okay, well, just send in the hooky then, and I'll tell you her name so if she appears again, I can call her in by her name. Okay then, sweetheart. Look, okay, I know it sounds a bit weird, but, you know, at the end of the day, you trust me, don't you? Yeah, I trust you. Good, because I trust you implicably. Now, uh, send in the whore. Okay then. So, you work for Lil Chiglet? Yeah, I work for Lil Chiglet. So, and, uh, you have a name? Yeah, it's, uh, Wendy with an I. Wendy with an I, eh? Yes, Wendy with an I. Okay, so, why is Lil Chiglet sent you and not bother to come himself? Yeah, he's a little bit busy at the moment. Okay then. So, what's the problem? Well, some of the other girls have gone missing, and Little Chickley wants to know where they've gone. Or maybe they just left him for another pimp. Maybe they just quit the scene. Well, I don't think so, because he sent one girl out on a job, and she never came back. And it was a high-paid job for him to test out a sex toy, and she... And she just never came back. Okay, so maybe he like wasted her. So if he killed her, go to the police. They would have been free. Well, first of all, little chick that don't go to the police, does he? He's a pimp. Right. If you're concerned that someone's died and been murdered, maybe they'd listen to you and they wouldn't come back onto little chicklet. No, no, no. There's something weird because the same client asked for two more girls, but he asked them to be fat. Right. Maybe he has a bit of a fat fetish. Maybe, but it's, does that not strike you as being odd? No, it doesn't strike me as being odd. It's just, I guess, he just wants some fat girl for a bit of extra cushion for the pushing. Yeah, but... It, it really doesn't make sense. It's not that I don't care, okay? I just think that this is like the wrong kind of job for us. You know, if you misplace a hooker, you don't go and send her in a PI for you, just go and fucking find this missing hooker. Look, please. The boss isn't wanting me to come back empty handed, he wants you on the case. And plus, it was my friend. My friend, Brandy. Brandy's gone missing. Brandy. What is wrong with you hookers with these weird fucking names? I mean, they sound so terrible. Yeah, but it's Brandy with an I. Fuck my life. Brandy with an I. Okay then. So, Wendy with an I. And you're looking for Brandy with an I. Yeah. Right then. Okay, I'll take the case. So you need to start answering some questions, okay? So, who is it that I'm looking for? Well, the boss has an address, but 
but there's like no one there. We've all been through the house and there's, n there's nothing there. Right, well give us the address and I'll take a look, okay? And then uh, we'll pick it up from there. So you go and tell little Chiglet that Percival Vert and his entire team's on the case, okay? We'll find your missing whores. Oh, please don't call us that. That's what you're paid to be, isn't it? We like to call ourselves escorts and liaison officers. Liaison officers? Holy shit. It's got real politically correct. Do you or do you not spread your legs for some random dick to go in there and get money from the uh, guy that did it? We do? Yeah, well, I'm gonna be blunt. That makes you a hooker. Okay? Liaison officer. <laughs> Okay, right, well, when you go out there, give Horny the address, and we'll get on the case at once I've gathered the troops, okay? Right, so, uh, what do I know about the Golden Glove? You know, it turns women into gold statues. I kind of like, no, it's not going to work on men because I touched myself with the golden glove and nothing happened I touched my skin on my arm I touched my mouth I touched my ball sack and my dick I even shoved a finger up the arse yeah, and nothing happened so it only works on girls and the other couple of hookers that I've done, those chunkers I touched them everywhere as well before I put the fingers inside and as soon as they got wet they changed so it has to be to do with the nanobots reacting with the female, uh, with female hormones it has to be I don't get why it's doing it though the nanobots were not programmed to do that. Fucking hell. That's the last time I'm gonna trust the Tenarian. Jesus Christ. Why did I touch why did I trust the Tenarians? Why? So I'm left with these massive gold statues, yeah. And I can't sell all the girls but as gold as statues because they still look like themselves but I can chop them down and melt them into gold bars yeah I'll definitely be uh, onto something with that yeah yeah so if I go on the pool with f with chunkers go for the fat chunky fox yeah and make out to them that they're fit and pretty and whatnot and go and buy them all the food they want I can then fatten them up a little bit more make them heavier and turn them into gold and I could be a billionaire very very fucking quickly cause come off it no one wants to get with a fat chunker yeah, a man with money is tempting them with as much chaos as they can fucking want. Then I'm definitely on to a win. Transform all these fat bitches into gold. And then I can get so much money. Right, let's see how hard it is to chop through these gold statues. They used to be women. Right, where's the toolbox? Shit, moved to a new fucking lab, got the fuck out of here, and I can't find my fucking toolbox. Ah, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. I could just think of it now. Just a few, a few more humiliating dates with some fatties, and then I can go off to the Caribbean. I could even leave this world and go somewhere else. The amount of money I'll make from selling all this gold 
all these gold bars. Yeah. Yeah. So it's easy. It's so simple. I get the fatties. Wet them up with burgers and booze. Finger them. Turn them to gold. And I'll be rich. <laughs> oh, this is the best invention I've ever made. <laughs> I should give up smoking. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck, how the hell did you find me? You, yeah, you got all my fucking bitches, but looking for you. I've, I've even got gum shoes looking for you. I got every fucking cunt looking for you, and I fucking found you. You uh, found me, have you, little chiglet? So, uh, what are you gonna do to me? Oh, I'm gonna fucking kill you. I'm gonna fucking have you up, you piece of shit. What happened to my hookers? You're costing me a fortune, and I want you. I got everyone searching for you, but I found you. I found you. Yeah, and out of curiosity, how the how did you do that? I've been sat in a car, looking through all these red light districts, sat outside every single fucking nightclub, just waiting for someone to prey on some fatties, because other than Brandy with an eye, you've had a few fatties off me, and they never came back. And I was thinking, mm, what's you doing with all these fatties for? And then I saw what you did. You come out of a nightclub with the fattest chick you could find. I mean, her bingo wings were hitting the fucking curb. But I followed you here. You did, did you? Well, you got me. But if you really want to know where your uh, women are, my bitches, yeah, your bitches. You really want to know where they are? They're over here. Come on, take a walk with me. I mean it. I'll fucking shoot you if you try something funny. Yeah, look, don't worry about that. See inside that pan? Yeah. Any idea what that is? I don't know, it's like some liquid metal. It is. It's gold. And you're going to be wearing it. What? <laughs> P-Vet Detective Agency, Vert speaking. How can I help? Hi there, it's Wendy with an eye. Wendy with an eye, hey. So, um, what can I do for you, Wendy, with an eye? 
Well, my boss has gone missing, which means your boss has gone missing. So you're telling me little chick that's gone missing, eh? Yeah, he's really gone missing, and I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Well, could another pimp have taken him out? No, that's the thing. Some of the other pimps, even his most hated rivals, they all met up, and they all agreed that something was going on with the with the, with the girls. And and they're all putting resources into finding the girls. Right then. Okay, so I I just haven't found anything. I went to the apartment that you gave me a dress for, and there was nothing there. Absolutely nothing there. I know. I know, but now I got I got a lead for you. You got a lead for me. Okay, talk to me. Well, you see, little Jiglet replaced his phone the other day before he went missing, because he got a crack in the screen. And I know that his, when he transferred everything over to the new phone, he didn't destroy or blank the old phone. So if you know anyone that can get past the security lockout on the phone, then you'd be able to get the uh, data. Because I'm sure you would have used his phone at some point when he was on his way down to wherever he was before he went missing. Okay then. Okay. Now that sounds like a credible lead. Right, I'm going to bring my tech specialist little bastard with me. And... We're gonna beam over, okay? Yeah, please, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Okay then. Well, uh, send me your coordinate via text message and I'll be there in, a f in about an hour or so. I, I gotta quickly wrap something up and I'll, um, and I'll be there as soon as possible, okay? Oh, thank you, Mr. Vert. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Okay guys, you know why, I'm, why I've called you all in at the same time. I know it's been a bit of a rarity yet, recently because we're all doing different jobs. We've taken on a load of big cases recently as well. And I, first of all, I want to congratulate you. Yes, well, uh, Percival. Yes, Rally. Um, you don't need to be doing all these formal things and so no one gives a fuck about that. Yeah, very true. Okay. Right, so, any ideas as to why we're all here together? Why it's that made you drop all your fucking cases? Any ideas? Uh, no, not really. How about you, little bastard? Well, Pa, um... If I'm not on a case, I'm like, uh, balls deep in some fit bird. Yeah, well, we need to have a chat about that, because... Uh, there's something that I need to talk, talk to you about. You know, like the birds and the bees. And plus, you don't want to be infecting someone with a fucking load of your offspring. Because, hey, I knew how painful it was like pissing you out of my fucking dick. Yeah, it's not fucking nice. So watch what you put in that goddamn thing. And I hope you're fucking bagging it up. And, hey, when it's time for you to go all fucking mad on your, on your reproductive cycle, you best fucking let me know so I can lock you in a fucking room. Yo, yo, pa, um, what, can we not... Like, talk about that shit here, because it's kind of, like, embarrassing and, and that. Yeah, okay. Anyways, I digress. Yeah. We all, in fact, we all fucking digress. Now, we got, we got hired by Little Chiglet, who happens to be a real nasty pimp, okay? And, basically, a lot of his bitches, a lot of his hookers, his hoes, yeah, they gone missing, and they were coincidentally all chonkers with the exception of one, which was the first girl that he hired out to 
this toy tester. Uh, excuse me, Percival. Yeah, honey. What do you mean by toy tester? Well, you know how you get sex toys, yeah? Yeah. Well, someone's gonna have to go and test new toys so they're so, so we, they know they're safe to use. You know, normally they shove them up chickens' asses or um, or into dogs' vaginas and whatnot. But you know, he wanted to test it directly onto human subjects, and yeah, it's very interesting to say the least because she went missing as well. So, Pa, why is he at? Why has he hired out these girls and they're on four out of the end come back? Well, the first one was like, maybe, you know, it's just plausible that one of his hookers has just gone there and fucked right off, yeah? It could still be feasible for the second or third girl that's gone missing. Because, hey, Pim's bitches tend to fuck off when, they're, when they've had enough cock, yeah? But when you've got up to eight go missing then that's very suspicious to a pimp especially since he's not earning any money and about half hour ago I got a phone call from Wendy with an eye Wendy with an eye? yeah Wendy with an eye oh she sounds very classy that she does uh, Raddy that she does and I may say that she's um, got a fine ass and some firm tits Pa. You're getting evil some uh Yeah, I know, and um, I'm, I know that I'll be uh, sleeping on the sofa tonight for saying that. But hey, it's true, okay? I'm not going to beat around the bush. Yeah, Pa, she's still giving you some real dirty fucking looks. Yeah, well, okay. Okay, a dog don't know why he's a dog, and a deer don't know why he's a fucking deer. They just are, okay, sweetheart? Yeah, Pa, I think you're gonna have to, um, like, sleep in the office and not in the, uh, flat section of the building. Anyways, let's move on. Wendy, with an eye, has basically said that li that little jiggler's gone missing as well. So, one could only assume that it's all connected. And... Who the fuck is that? Well, I don't know. I ain't expecting anyone, Pa. No, no, I... First of all, I'm not expecting anyone either. <laughs> Who the fuck are you? And why the fuck are you mar all marching into my into my flat? Not least alone the office, but you're in my fucking flat. What the fuck? Get the fuck out. Who the fuck are you? Allow me to introduce myself. Okay. I am... Uncle Manette. Uncle Manette. Who the fuck are you, Uncle Manette? I am Uncle Manette. And I'm the new and I'm the newest crime lord in town. The newest crime lord in town, eh? Hey? Right, so what makes you a crime lord then, Uncle Manette? Well then I shall tell you. Yeah, boss, boss, boss. Get on your knees and stab yourselves to death. But, but, just do it. You see, that's power, okay? That's a lot of power. If I made these three hard guys want to just kill themselves because they know exactly what Uncle Manette would do, okay? Do you understand me? Okay, Uncle Manette, so what is it you want from us? I think you're after the same person that I'm after. And what makes you think that? Well, you see. I spoke to uh, Wendy with an eye. Yeah, she does get around a bit. Yeah, she does, doesn't she? Anyway, she was saying that you got hired by Little Chiglet. And 
little chick that was kind of like working for me as well. He, he didn't know it though, but he was offering me tributes, thinking that he was paying it to someone else. Okay then, Uncle Manette, the newest crime kingpin of London. So what does that have to do with with this case then? What? Why are you here? Well, I was thinking that I they because you're the world renowned Percival Vert, the biggest sleazy scumbag ever. But yet you get results and you're cheap as well. And I know that you're gonna crack this case. Yeah, well that's what I'm aiming for. So now my employer's dead. There's not much I can really do about that because, you know, a man needs to get paid and whatnot. Yes, I understand. So I'm picking up, I'm picking up little Jiglet's contract. Now you work for me. Okay then, Uncle Manette. The case is going on. So, with a bit of luck, we'll get a bit more progress soon. I mean, we know I've got a phone and I've got a location of potentially where he could be. Good, good. That's excellent. And I want you to see this as well. Bring it up, boys. Bring it up. Right, boss. Yeah, boss. Bring, um, what up? Well, you see, I have a daughter and her friend went missing. But her friend had a tracker placed in her handbag by me because I don't want my daughter to be upset if something ever happens to her to her friends especially since she doesn't have many friends being the daughter of a crime kingpin you know not real friends minders yes people who work for us yes but not actual friends okay now her friend wanted my daughter to go to a nightclub and I said no you're not going to the uh, nightclub because the club that you want I have no hand in and you're not going to a place that's not sanctioned by me. Does that understand? Do you understand that, Percival Vert? Yeah, I I understand. Ah, gentlemen, here is my contribution to your investigation. Right, you're gonna need this crowbar. There. What do you think to that? Is a gold statue of a fat chick. Yes, it is, isn't it? Only this is uh, my daughter's best friend. Um, so she's best friends with a statue. No, the girl was not a statue before she went to this nightclub, and then something happened, and and the security of this nightclub found this statue. In the toilets, they found a statue in the toilets. Yes, exactly. So how could a big, giant, fat statue that weighs a lot? I mean, boys, how are your backs? Oh, boss, my, my back's fucked. Getting out of the fucking stairs. Yeah, the uh, lifts are out at the moment. Sorry about that, boys. Exactly. So how does one get a f big statue of a fat girl into the toilets of a nightclub without anyone noticing well I'll tell you how because it's not beaming technology because nightclubs now have got anti-beaming that technology in there to stop abductions and rapes I know because I had to put that technology in some of the clubs that I own okay and it's a it's, and the law says that it's a slow, it's a slow phase in and whatnot to give people time to to get the uh, changes implemented. Okay, and I know that that club has anti-beaming technology because I sold it to them. Well, one of my subsidiary companies sold it to them. Do you understand where I'm going with this? 
Yeah, so this statue wasn't a statue when in the club. Exactly, because I got the CCTV cameras. And this is interesting because it shows her going in, but there's no, no one coming out with her description. And we had the computers do the face recognition on everyone that came out. And you know what I found? No, we don't know, Uncle Manette. Please enlighten us. Well, Ratty, you know my name. I know all your names. I've been watching you for so long. But the answer is, she didn't come out. She was in the toilet as a gold statue. Right. So she was turned into a gold statue by someone in the club. Indeed. Indeed. And this is what gets even more intriguing. Do you see what's in her hand? That's solid gold as well. Uh, it's like a business card. In fact, it is a business card, Mr. Vert. It's very perceptive of you. See, the name is quite missing. Well, we know the first name's Richard. See, see that? Richard. And a partial phone number. But this is even more interesting as well. Get the scanner. This is a medical grade scanner. And you can get the uh, little medical uh, instrument attachment for your phone. But this, oh, this is a proper medical unit. Yeah. This, this girl here is really a girl. It's really my daughter's friend. And look. The scanner shows the outline of organs. And it shows a genetic marker of a female. And these genetic markers have been identified as my daughter's friend. Little Miss Cherry Forever. Cherry Forever. Yes, that was her stripper name. A fat stripper. Hey, some people like it, okay? And she didn't work for me, she worked for herself. But still, she's dead. And she's a statue. Someone in that club has, has known something that's gone on in here. Because, why would you leave that there if you weren't disturbed? That is a good point. It's a very good point, Uncle Manette. Yes. And... I've also got another lead for you. There's a guy that was seen dancing with her and piling her with drinks. Lots of drinks, I may add. He bought her drinks all night. Okay. And... And... I just did a bit more investigating, you see. I managed to get a CCTV profile of this man's entire journey for the whole day and guess what what he came out of the ibis the ibis i see so we know his hotel room yes we do we do now i'm going to send you on a mission mr vert i want you to go down to that hotel and I want you to find him. And when you find this man, I want you to contact me and send, because I know you've got teleports units. I know that you can transport anywhere you want in the world. You could even transport to the moon. I know that you can. I know that you've got those upgrades on your technology. So here are the coordinates that I want you to come to once you have the bastard who's done this. Do you understand me? Yeah, Uncle Manette. We understand you. Good. Good, good, good. Now, we're gonna take this girl out. And I'm not gonna waste her. She's going to stand in my living room in tribute to her life of making my daughter happy as a friend. Now we shall see you soon, Mr. Vert, and um, if you don't disappoint me.
you may end up working for me a lot more often. Do you understand? I understand you, Uncle Manette. I understand you real good. Excellent. I shall catch you another time then. Hello and welcome to the Ibis and what can I do for you? A room for two, hey? No, we're we're after a bit of information. Yeah. We would like to speak to the manager, please. Really, well, um why waste my time, you know? I'm just trying to be polite and whatnot and trying to do my job. And you're just taking up Q space. Q space. Are you off your fucking nut? There's no one here. Probably, I will put money on that. No one's spoken to you in a good, at least a good half hour. That is nothing to do with you. That is nothing to do with you whatsoever. Right, well. Anyways, I'd like to speak to the manager, please. And uh, why would you like to speak to the manager? Because I want some information from him. Yes, and uh, we're not allowed to release any information. Yes, well, on general practice, you're not supposed to give inf any information out. A breach is GDPR, but when you see a badge like this, a gumshoe badge, you get your fucking manager, or I'm gonna beat the shit out of you, okay? Well, there's no need to be that harsh. I'm only doing my job. Yeah, well, all you have to do is go and get the fucking manager. Get the fuck out of here and go and get him now, you cunt. Hi there, excuse the hired help. Um, he should not have spoken to you in that manner. Yeah, okay. Apology ex accepted. Um, we need to know have you had anyone come in here that's out of the ordinary? And um, what would I have thought the ordinary be? Well, has someone been seen bringing in all these fat hookers or something like that? Hmm, it's an intriguing one. We're not supposed to reveal any information like that. Yes, well, it's a matter of life and death because you don't want to be like putting the newspapers for the hotel that a lot of killings happened in, do you? A lot of killing? Yeah, see, our suspect has been like, um, Getting hold of fat girls and killing them. And you don't want that in the newspaper. You know, the hotel that allowed a fat girl to be killed. You know, the um, the fat acceptance mob. They'll just fucking protest you and protest you and protest you. You don't want that in the uh, newspapers, do you? That you're responsible for all these fatties getting killed in your, in your hotel. Yes, uh, well... We need to avoid that, don't we? Yeah, we do. So, do you have any information on what room this person could be in? Well, we did notice a girl get taken up last night and she didn't come down. Not that we noticed, we may we may have missed her, but you know, you know what it's like. When it gets busy, you just don't have time to go over CCTV. Yes, very true. But you're saying that no one noticed her come down? No. And we noticed another one go up uh, not so long ago. Hey, not so long ago. What what room is it? Floor 5, room 505. 505. Okay. Okay. Right. So, rather than me kicking the door down, you know, you don't want that. You don't want someone to have to come out and repair that door, do you? Absolutely not. Do you have a key card that you can give me? Yes, definitely. Most definitely. Bear me one moment. I shall program this key card up for you to have access to all rooms on the fifth floor. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. There you go. It's all done for you. And um, please, if you're going to kill this person, try not to get blood everywhere because. We just had the fresh carpets put down there, and they're quite white. Who has white carpets in a hotel? Yes, that is a good point. 
Although you have to speak to the furnishings department because they will not listen to someone like me. Yeah. Or tell them from me that they're a bunch of fucking useless cunts. Yeah, oh, I will. I will. Okay guys, so it's room 505, okay, yes, well, I think it's done this way, okay, yeah, well, okay, let's, let's, like, do this, good, 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 right then, so here's the plan, Horny, you stand at the back, little bastard, you, uh, open the door, and me and Raddy all just pile in first, Followed by you two, yeah. Why do I have the honour of going first? Because you're scary and I'm scary. A little bastard, just a little bastard. And I don't want Horny to get injured. Do you understand? Yes, well, that is very reasonable, Mr. Vert. Excellent, Rally. Excellent. Right then. Before we go in, can you hear anything through that door? With those extra large and sensitive ears? Yes, Percival. And I think someone's in absolute danger because they're screaming. Right then, this is our moment. Little bastard. Do you want to do the honors? Yeah, yeah. Sh yeah, sure, Pa. Let's do it. Yeah, that means get your key card, shove it in the door, and fucking get out of the way. Point oh. Oh, oh, sorry, Pa. Sorry. Okay, then. Ready? One, two, three. On the floor now, you fucking piece of shit. On the fucking floor, right now. What the fuck? Help me. Look, look what he's done to me. Oh shit. You're half transformed. Oh, 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 please. Please help me. Right. Horny. You beam her to hospital, yeah? Stay with her. Little bastard. You go with, uh, with your mum as well, yeah? And report back to me as soon as she we work out what's going on with her. Yeah, right, Pa. Right, Pa. Okay. See you guys in a bit, Rowdy. We look for a bit of interrogation. Yes, Mr. Vert. I'm definitely on a bit of interrogation. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, Uncle Minette. We've uh, got him. Yeah, we're gonna go to the one that's recording uh, right now. Yeah. We'll be there in like five minutes. Just wanna give him a few uh, digs, you know. Excellent. Excellent suggestion. We'll see you in five. Oh, God. What are you doing? Who the fuck do you think you are? Well, we've been hired by a pimp and a crime syndicate kingpin, okay? All for you. So, um, the boss suggested I do something and then bring you to him. And what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Ready, hold him. What, what, what the fuck? Oh, fucking dick! Ah. 
fuck. Ugh. Right, here we go. Ready? Let's get him to the coordinates. Yeah, sure, boss, sure. Mr. Virgin Ratty, yeah, I want you to, um, I want you to beat the shit out of him a little bit whilst I sit down here on this chair before we stick him onto that chair. Yeah, go on, here's a pole, here's some fucking dusters, start beating the shit out of him. Right then, so, why are you here, what's led you to being here, I want to know what has been going on, oh, hey Uncle Minette before you start, there's a girl in hospital that horny and that little bastard are with, and we got there just in time because she was halfway through transformation. He is turning her into gold with that fucking glove. Really? Now that is very, very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Hmm. Do you wanna, like, take that glove off? No. No, don't. Diet please, that's the best invention I've ever made. It was an accident. It was an accident. And, um, what was the accident? <laughs> it was supposed to be a sex toy. It was supposed to be a sex toy. The technology that I put in there, it, it went wrong. It went wrong and yet you continue to do it. Sounds like it went right. No, no, I mean it. I mean it. It was supposed to be a sex toy. I put, got some alien nanites in there to make the gold vibrate. And it's supposed to give off all this pleasure, but I don't know what went wrong. It turns women to gold when reacting with their hormones. Really, huh? Really? So, hmm, Uncle Manette needs to have this glove. Take it off of your own accord, or else. Oh, please, please don't take my invention. Really well. Um, that's not the only thing I'm going to take off you. Once we know exactly where you currently live, which ain't going to take long. Because everyone's scared of me, and and I'm gonna do a lot too. You're gonna regret every moment, every fucking moment. And then when I'm done with you, I'm gonna dump you into a new pliette. Got one lined up ready for you. Look, please, it was all an accident. <laughs> it was all an accident. I didn't mean it to happen. And yet you continued to do what you did. Mm, Uncle Manette doesn't like this. Uncle Manette really, really doesn't like this. So, how does it work? You just put the glove on and you just put your fingers in and the nanites do the rest. As I said, it was an accident, but yet you carried on. Hmm, doesn't sound much of an accident to me. Well, in the, in I suppose, if it was an accident, I could accidentally put you in a oubliette. I've got one picked out for you. Once once we've kicked the shit out of you a little bit more. Because, um... You really upset my daughter. The one that you did in the uh, club. That was her best friend. And Uncle Manette doesn't like it, seeing his daughter's upset because her friend has been killed. Is it reversible? No. There's no way to reverse it. Interesting. Very interesting. 
Well, as restitution, I'm coming at taking your glove. I'm going to put it in a box for it to never be used again. Well, unless I choose to use it on some girl that um, makes a fool out of herself. Or steals from Uncle Manette. But the glove is coming with me. And I'm going to take you somewhere that you're not going to like. Um, Uncle Manette, what's an oubliette? Oh... It's an old, old invention. You used to find them in medieval castles, so there was no way out of an oubliette. And half the time you'd find yourself being put in one, and there's a, a partially decayed person already in there. And you have no choice but to eat that dead person because there's no, there's no food in there. No one puts food in into an oubliette. No. No. It's a place to forget about people. And then, once all your food supply is gone, i.e. the rotting corpse, then you become the rotting corpse. Because there's not long you can live by uh, having no food or water, or if you're eating a rotting flesh, which could be rotting there for years. For years. Mmm, that is dark and evil yet. And there's no way out because they are 10 meters deep at the very least and they're quite thin quite thin and you might get the odd rats that can climb in the climb out but they might be your only source of food if you want to survive oubliettes are good places to make people forget about the person that's inside like you I'm going to refer to you as Goldfingers because your glove is golden and you use your fingers to do your naughty naughty magic your naughty naughty magic trick Uncle Manette doesn't like this no right then Mr. Vert here this bag of money this is yours and it's a lot of money for doing the dirty work for me as in finding this piece of shit and as for him he'll never see anyone ever again yeah oh bye then yes bye bye control on the uh, sensor that's just been switched on can you see it beam that piece of shit straight into the oubliette and then beam me back to the office for I have an uncle Manette I can do whatever I want. Alrighty, so that was quite an easy job really, wasn't it? Yes, it was, Percival. It really was. So, what now? Well, now, I'm going to go home. Going to put my feet up on my desk. Probably jerk off a little bit whilst I'm waiting for Horny to get home from the uh, hospital and see what's up with the girl. And... Rally, who's that? Hmm, I'm not sure, because the only people that ever phone is you and, is you and the rest of the family. One second. What? You, you're right there. Are you okay? Right. Okay, then I shall let him know. We'll see you down in the hospital, uh, little bastard. We'll be there shortly. Percival? Yeah, Rally? It's horny. Why, um, what's happened? She just died. What? How the. How how did she just die? She was just, she was just there. She was, she was just there. How, how, how the hell did her horny die? She fell asleep and she just didn't wake up. Little bastard seems to think that's the end of her life cycle, because horny and even your son don't have a long lifespan. It's like five years, isn't it? 
Right. Okay, let's get there. Thank you for listening to the Gunshi special of Goldfingers, the man with the golden glove. Percival Vett will be back towards the end of the year for series 6 of Gumshoe. If you like this content, please hit like, subscribe and share. If you haven't already done so, why not check out more content from Master X Media by clicking the link in the description below and it will take you to all our other podcast channels, to our various YouTube channels and to our books and social media. Until next time, bye for now.